today we're in the Hollywood Hills at John Lautner's historic Carpell House to talk to a man who's a designer and a collector of many things, including cars, art, and of course, watches. His name is Mark Hidawi, and today we're talking watches. Thanks so much for being here, Mark. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really nice that we got to finally sit down and do this. Absolutely. For some of our readers who might not be as familiar with you, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure. I'm a designer focused on restoration of mid-century architecture. And some people who read the first issue of the Hodinkee magazine might recognize where we're sitting. Can you tell us where we are? Uh, yeah, we're in John Lautner's 1956 Harpel House. One of the things I noticed when, when I walked in for the first time is how actually lived in the house is, which is so nice. Like often you see pieces of architecture like this and they, they feel like museums, yeah. even when people do live in them. Yeah. But you know, there's the dog bed on the floor and there's a you know cup of coffee on the countertop. Like it's, it's an actual home. Yeah. Somebody lives and it's a kind of like living, breathing piece of architecture. You know, the magic is to actually interface with it, yeah. is it to use it. Whether it's the watches or cars or anything else. I'll drive my short wheelbase to the grocery store and not have any issue parking it in the parking lot. I couldn't really live in fear of those things, and if I did, I just wouldn't own them anymore. My work with restoration is really all about trying to really make it feel like you didn't do that. As you walk through a place that was done, that you don't identify what's new and what's old, that you just walk in and you just accept it for the way it is. You actually got into collecting watches through collecting other things. Can you tell us how you first kind of got into the watch world? Yeah, I mean, watches were something that came sort of late for me in, in my collecting world. The first watch I bought was a 1655 Orange Hand Explorer II. It's a pretty good place to start. Yeah, I think at that time I had a, a Lusso and, you know, that was sort of like the McQueen car and, yeah. you know. I think the 1655 was sort of the McQueen watch, so. Yeah, it's a fun pair. Exactly. Of these six watches, which was the first to enter your collection? It was a 6200. I had had a big crown, and for me, that was sort of like the ultimate version of a big crown, and, you know, loved the idea of the Explorer dial and that sort of first version of a uh, sub. I think what I really like about that watch is that it doesn't feel like anyone's put their hands on it. And I love the example, which is, always a big part of my collecting. It's not just about what the model is, but what the example is. And you know, I, I feel like I have a parallel in all my collecting with that. Whether it's cars or watches or anything, it's not just, is it a great model, but is it a great example of that model? And then from there, we have another Explorer dial sub that at first glance has some similarities, but is, is a very different watch yeah. in the end. So that's a 5513. So that would be the last Explorer dial Submariner. And I like the idea of having a 5513, but it's great to have something that's so unique like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're so used to seeing that case and that bezel, but to see a dial that looks so much earlier in that case is, mm -hmm. is great. And then we have a, a kind of trio of Paul Newman Daytonas here that are, again, at first glance, kind of similar, but each a little bit different. Which of these Paul Newmans entered the collection first? The gold 6241. You know, early on in my watch collecting, I didn't wear any gold watches. And now I would say, while I only have two gold watches, I probably wear my gold watches the most. And I love the idea of a gold sport watch. You know, there's something great about that combination of, you know, the sort of formality of a gold watch, but the design of a sport watch. So something else we'll see here is five of the watches have, have oyster bracelets, and then this watch has a Jubilee bracelet. And I know this is a special bracelet as well. Yeah, well, so that watch came out of Mexico, okay. and that is still on its made in Mexico Jubilee. Okay. So I actually really love the way the Jubilee feels, but I also just like that that's how that watch came. And you know, with watches, it's always so difficult because they change hands so many times yeah. and one very rarely knows what band came on what, what watch. But it's interesting when one actually does know that mm -hmm. that's how it came, that came from an original owner. So I like leaving it that way. It's also the dial on this is so beautiful. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing, you know, 
You know, the difference in, in looking at a sub or looking at a Daytona, for me, I really wanted Daytona to be pristine. It's mm. not really about there being warmth or patina to the dial. Whereas a sub can take on those elements and that sort of evidence of time, gain that warmth and gain character in a way that one really responds to. What drew you to this watch as kind of a, another variation and evolution of the Paul Newman? All the Newmans I've had always had white dials, but I thought that, you know, a black dial was kind of a nice addition to that. I think a black dial Newman's a little more subtle um, in its appearance. It almost looks a little bit more like a standard Daytona. You mentioned earlier a little bit about watches kind of showing their age, and we have this gold GMT here that, you know, it really does show age, but in a really elegant, kind of understated way. I really like the gold GMT, especially on an Oyster Band. I think for me, you know, that's certainly not the rarest or most valuable watch, but it's a watch I wear a lot. I love the color of the dial, the color of the bezel against the gold. I think for me with the gold watches is, you know, when they're not polished and they kind of get to take on this more warmth in their color, a little bit of a patina and depth, they're really beautiful. One unifying thing, and you touched on it, is this idea of things that kind of take on character and, and warmth. And I think that applies to, obviously, the watches we have sitting here, to the Prouvé table we're sitting at, to the home we're sitting in, and then to some of the cars that you have parked out front. What is it about that sense of warmth and like showing and taking on age as, as a positive that kind of unites all of your collecting? Well, you know, again, I mean, I think it gets to a point as you refine your aesthetic, it's much more than just a model. If you wanted a Prouvé table, there's a great Prouvé table and then there's a not great Prouvé table that's been refinished and repainted and has no soul left in it. And I think that it's about finding further depth in one's collecting. And also just the story behind the things, you know, for me, that's a big part of it. Do you think that your car collecting is probably what most closely resembles your approach to watch collecting? Yeah, I mean, I think cars and watches for me have a real parallel. I don't put a lot of thought into it, but I definitely think like, oh, this watch is yeah. so perfect with this car. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's like, of course, you kind of yeah. have to, right? You know, I think like the 6241 Gold Newman or the 6241 Steel Newman, such a great watch with a Carrera RS. You know, there's something that's like yeah. quintessentially 70s about that. Each one specifically has its unique attributes. I have a 58 Porsche Speedster that is original paint and interior, some mice in blue with uh, red interior. And then I have a 54 Porsche Speedster, which is the 50th Speedster built. All of these things are historical and you want to feel that in them. You want to feel the integrity, whether it's their original or that they have lived a special life or whatever that is, I think that there's a lot of interest in that. Collecting is about making those connections. Yeah. You know, I've collected for so many years in so many different categories and the object is the end of it, but there's so much behind it. And ultimately it's about being sensitive and having a real sensitivity to the details and to the nuances of things. Again, there's a parallel there to what we talked about with the cars, with the watches. It's about having a connection to subtleties of things.